How do you know that you're listening effectively? As a coach, it can feel like the idea of listening actively is the least measurable of all of the different competencies and skills of the coach, but it's really one of the most, if not the most important skill to be leveraging in the coaching process, because without it, then we really begin to run the show and we step immediately out of coaching and more into being an expert and an advisor. And we want to avoid that. We want to step fully into the coaching process. So that means that we need to know how do we measure listening? Because if we understand how to measure it, we can learn how to improve it. So today we're going to be looking first at the competency and then two ways to look at the markers of success for this competency. To begin, the competency of listening actively, competency number six, is that the coach focuses on what the client is and is not saying to fully understand the whole picture of what's being communicated in the context of the client, their systems, and uh, to support the client's self-expression. So we want to follow along with the client, not only with what they're saying, but the system of thinking and the underlying meaning. We want to pay attention to body language and tone and patterns and the way of thinking that the, co uh, that the client is bringing to the table. And how we do this and how we measure active listening or listening actively comes up in two different ways. First, what the coach is actually doing and in what the coach is reflecting. There is only one marker of success related to the first. What does the coach actually do that demonstrates, clearly demonstrates, active listening? And that's just simply silence. For, that si for this side of listening actively as a competency, this is the only way to really measure the proactive act of listening. Is there spaciousness in the session? Is there silence in the session? And without that silence, there's not an opportunity to really listen to the client. Is the coach stepping back, allowing the client to fully express themselves, have time to talk? Is the coach jumping in and interrupting? Is the coach immediately after the client speaks, beginning to speak with their own question? These are markers that detract from a score in an assessment and say, you know, the client is not being heard because the coach is doing too much talking. The coach is not pausing. The coach is not allowing space. So the simple way of measuring active listening is that there's that breathing room, that space in a session. The coach is stepping back. They're not interrupting. That's the easy side of it. Although it's not necessarily the easy part to do as a coach, it's easier to measure. But even though you might have silence, it doesn't mean that there's meaningful work being done in the silence. So we want to go beyond the silence and look at how the coach is using the silence to actively listen and reflect that listening in each exchange that we offer back to the client. So let's take a look at the other markers of success that are related to the idea of reflecting. Marker number one, the coach's questions and observations are customized by using what the coach has learned about the client, who they are, the situation, their agenda. The coach inquires about or explores the words of the client. My rule of thumb is practically every time we offer a statement or question, we should look to use a word the client uses. And that's a skill that's built up over a longer period of time. So no need to feel extra rushed to build the skill, but you want to begin listening for it. How well are you using client language? How often are you using it to build that exercise or build up the, the muscles of active listening? Marker number three, the coach asks about and explores clients' emotions. And we do this effectively, not labeling an emotion before it is shared. Instead, we might say, I'm noticing your, bre your breathing is really shallow all of a sudden as you talk about your relationship with this peer. What's happening? Well, that's exploring the emotion while not necessarily saying that I know what that emotion is. It is fear. So we give space and ask about, explore emotions. The coach explores the client's energy shifts, the nonverbal cues, body language, other behaviors that are present in the session as part of 
the overall exploration around the agenda. We're listening to not only the words, but the whole person of the clients that's sitting in front of us or talking on the phone with us or in a webinar. We, we watch them, we hear them, not only what they're actively saying, but what they're expressing with the rest of their body and their tone. The coach asks about or explores how the client sees themselves and the coach simply reflects or summarizes what the client communicated to ensure the client's clarity and understanding. I say this quite a few times throughout the entire coach training. I'm not a big fan of paraphrasing because I've seen it done too often in a coaching session. And over-relying on paraphrasing can detract from the ability for the client to explore forward. My preference is to use client language and explore body shifts and tonal shifts in the questions I ask and the statements I offer and openly hand back to the client. But offering a paraphrase and reflecting the client language from time to time is really powerful, especially if the client is expressing something very deep and meaningful so that the client hears their own words and they can be clear for themselves about what they've communicated, which is really what this is all about. All of the act of listening is not for the coach to get the right information to solve the client's problem. Listening actively is giving space for the client to do their own work, to hear their own language, to reflect on the way they're showing up and the impact the situation is having on the core of who they are because right when they begin talking about that presentation they're gonna have to be giving, they freeze up even in the midst of a coaching session what are the thoughts behind that? How can we impact them? And how can we remember a new perspective as we consider how the client perceives themselves now and how they want to perceive themselves as they get on the stage? This is hard work. It is good work. And it is measurable in these ways. How much space are we giving the client? And how well are we reflecting back that whole of the client as we come into the session and use their language their body language, their tone, the sense of emotional shifts in a session, exploring their perception of themselves, and allowing them to reflect on a, a string of communication, the way they've communicated throughout an entire coaching session. How well are we reflecting all of that back to them? It's important, but it makes for a much more effective journey for the client. They get to do the harder work for themselves. Thank you for helping them do the hard work, listening actively, and thank you for coaching.